Hello, experimenters. I'm Seth Noir. The man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting is just seen a lout. And today we're going to find the average specific heat of aluminum at a certain temperature range. So we're going to take an aluminum cube and we're going to dunk it in some water. And we're going to stir, 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 stir. It's going to reach a final equilibrium temperature. And from that data, we can determine the specific heat of this aluminum cube for that temperature range. All right, great, great. So let's look at our equations. This is all about the conservation of energy. So if we add together all the changes of heat, well, that should equal zero because energy is not created or destroyed. Great. So this would be the change in heat of the aluminum cube plus the change in heat of the water, and then plus, plus all the delta Q other. All those gains and losses of heat that aren't considered in these two. We'll talk more about that later, but for our equation, we're considering that zero. That equals zero. Okay, great. So we have the change in heat of the aluminum plus the change in heat of the water equals zero. And then we take one, move it to the other side. So delta Q aluminum equals the delta Q water. And we have a minus sign now on one side or the other. We got to determine where to put that minus sign. Now mathematically, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter mathematically. But there's a convention that we're going to follow, and that is we'll put the minus sign on the side that loses heat. And that's the aluminum cube. All right, great. So the average specific heat of the aluminum, the minus sign there, the mass of the aluminum, the change in temperature of the aluminum equals the average specific heat of the water, the mass of the water, the change in temperature of the water. All right, let me break it up a little bit more. And we do algebra to get this. All right, so let's study this. Let's study this. So this is the expression for the specific heat of aluminum, the average specific heat of aluminum for our temperature range, 100 degrees Celsius to around 20 degrees Celsius room temperature. So the mass of the water, well, we can weigh that, no problem. The specific heat of the water you're given all right, and now we have the change in temperature. The final temperature minus the initial temperature of water. Notice there's two subscripts here and only one subscript here. Ah, but to explain that, look below to the final temperature of the aluminum. There's no subscripts on, there's no other subscripts here because they should be equal because they're reaching thermodynamic equilibrium. Terrific, terrific. And then below we have the mass of the aluminum. We can find that. And then the initial temperature of the aluminum we're given as 100 degrees Celsius. And then the final we measure. Notice that it's initial minus final because that minus sign was distributed in this term, the aluminum term. Great. So let's see. Let's see how we can find these values. So we have our aluminum cube. We have our triple beam balance. First thing we do, little knob on the side here. Uh, change that to make sure the needle is perfectly centered. My needle is always perfectly centered because I have an aura of accuracy that just affects everything. Put this here. And then notice there's a little handle here, a paper clip. So to counterbalance that, paper clip on the other side. But there's also a thread here too, but we're considering that negligible. Great. Find that mass. Once you find that mass, great, great, great. We're done with that. Paper clip, we're done with that too. And now find the mass of the double styrofoam small cup. Uh -huh, put that there. Find its mass. It'll be pretty small. Terrific, terrific. And now we need about 60 to 70 grams of water. So a trick we can use is to put this at 60, maybe 65, because we also have the mass of the cup, and then 
pour in the water, and then as soon as it tips over, we know we have around 60 to 70 grams of water. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Great. Now we can find that mass. Terrific. Find it. Everything's happy. Now notice this is the mass of the cup plus the water. So we found the mass of the cup. Take the difference, and then you have a mass of the water. Uh, so now we put this with our Celsius thermometer. Okay, great. So we'll measure that in a second. But let's get our aluminum cube boiling. So over here we have our boiling water. Now this is the digital thermometer that's used to measure that temperature. It's not the most accurate thing. And it's even spatially sensitive. So depending on where the sensor is, we can get a slightly different value. As soon as we're sure that this is boiling, we just call it 100 degrees, despite what this might say. Okay, then we put the aluminum cube in, put it in on top inside the ring, don't try to throw it in on the side here, right from up above, in, and then the little handle here, put that on the ring that's on top. Notice that this temperature will drop, will drop, because we just added a colder object, and eventually this will rise to where it was before, and then we call that boiling. So while that's boiling, we can get the final, the, the initial temperature of the water. All right, so we want to make sure we're low, looking at it without a parallax, and then we read the initial temperature to one decimal place. Great. Now, while this is boiling, let's, let's revisit the Delta Q weather. Let's talk about this a little bit. There are many places where we can gain and lose heat. First thing that we might notice is that this aluminum cube is touching the bottom of the glass, and the glass can get hotter than 100 degrees. So if we left that cube there a long time, if we're very, very patient, that's an interesting thing to think about. Also, when we do the transfer, oh, that's a big time where we can lose heat. The longer we're outside of this in the air and not in there, we can lose some heat. So we want to do that smoothly. Also notice, when we do the transfer, we could get some mass from that water and put that extra mass in this water. That's something to think about. And when we do the stirring, when we do the stirring, we want to be vigorous because we want to reach thermodynamic equilibrium very quickly because we can be losing more heat conducting out the top and through the styrofoam, although, of course, the styrofoam is a terrible conductor of heat. That's why we use it. But it does conduct a little heat. So we want to reach thermodynamic equilibrium very quickly. So we want to stir vigorously, but not too vigorously, because water can splash out. We don't want that either. And another interesting thing to notice is that when we're stirring, we're adding kinetic energy. I wonder if that affects the heat at all, or is that negligible too? So these are some fun delta Q others to think about. I think our cube is boiling. All right. So now we're ready for the transfer. To do the transfer, we're going to take this, slide it over, quickly up, in, and then slide it away, because we don't want the heat from this to be going into that system. All right, so take a peek at this. That's good. That's about where it was before. That's cube is now at 100 degrees, we're going to call it. And then I'm watching it. I'm watching it. And then as soon as it reaches its highest temperature, it's in thermodynamic equilibrium. And that's the temperature I need, that final temperature for both of them. As soon as we get that, that's our data. Then we use those numbers, calculate the average specific heat of aluminum, and then we compare it to the accepted. Now, on the quick sheet, there's usually some sort of standard of accuracy you have to reach. It's probably 15%, but for my students, it's 10%. And if you get a percent error that's higher than that standard, mm, I'm going to smell some aluminum soup cooking again, and you're the chef. Good luck.